Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Math. Today we're looking at the third grade concept of division, specifically how we can divide using equal shares or equal objects, and we'll do it in five minutes or less. So let's start with this sample problem. We've got some triangles, and if you see, we've got a total of 18 triangles here, and we are going to divide them equally, and we're going to put them into three boxes. So I'm going to draw three boxes right here. And so this is a typical third grade problem. The question will be, how many triangles go in each box? So that is going to be an example of equal shares, because I know there's going to be three groups or three boxes. I just don't know how many of these triangles or how many of these shares go into each of the boxes. So there's a few different ways to solve this, and I want to show all of them to you. One would just be to make what's called a one-to-one -one correspondence. So you take each of these triangles and you move them into the boxes. So what you could do is you can cross out three triangles right there. And I'm just going to put little hash marks, one, two, three. I put one in each box because remember they have to be equal. So I'm going to cross out the next three, one, two, three. And I'm just going to do this until I run out of triangles. That's one, two, three. Now I've got another group of three right down here. So far I've got four in each box. Looks like it's going to be five and then six. So it looks like my answer is going to be six. And if I wanted to write this as a multiplication sentence or division sentence, I could. Now that I've got all three numbers, 18 divided by three groups is going to be six. Or you could also say you've got three groups and there's going to be six triangles in each group. And that's going to give you a total of 18. So sometimes you can write this as a multiplication sentence and look for a missing factor. Another way to do this would be to simply just circle sets of three. So let's say I've got one, two, three, four, five. There we go. Those are my six sets of three. So there's different ways you can solve this. Now let's look at a new problem. So here's another example. You have a lot of marbles on the screen. In this case, we've got 56. And you want to put them into baggies, and each baggie needs to contain exactly four. So you're going to put them into equal groups of four. Your question is, how many equal groups can you find? So if we wanted to set it up as a strip diagram, it would look a little bit like this. You get a total of 56. Up at the top, you've got sets of four. And your question is, is how many sets of four can you find? If you happen to have your fours memorized up to 56, you could use a related multiplication fact to figure this out. But most of us don't know all fours past either 40 or 48. So we're going to just look at this as a division problem. So probably the easiest way to solve this would be to just make groups of four and just keep track of those groups on a tally chart. So I'm just going to draw my groups of four here and I'm going to try to keep them as close together as possible, making sure I only get four in a group. So, so far I've got three groups and I'm just going to kind of go from the bottom, work my way up and go from right to left. But you could do it any way you want to. As long as you are getting groups of four, you could either circle them, you could cross them out, um, anything to where if you make a mistake for whatever reason, you haven't destroyed it so much that you can't see your circles. You don't want to draw over it so much and you realize that you've got an extra circle and you're missing a circle, and then you can't see anything underneath. So you always want to be keeping that in mind in case you need to go back and look at something again. So it looks like I'm going to come up with 13, and here is group 14. So it looks like I've got 14 groups, but just to make sure, I'm going to go ahead and label them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yes, 14 groups, and if I wanted to, I can even do multiplication to make sure my product is correct. 4 times 4 is 16. I'm going to carry that 1. 4 times 1 is 4. Add that 1 back in. And my answer is going to be 5. So my answer is going to be 56.